So all there is is what's happening, is this, is what's happening. <laughs> Isn't that so brilliant? I love speaking like that. All there is is what is. In every moment, that's all there is, is what's happening. You can't escape it. You can't go to the moon and get away from what is. You can't go to Australia and get away from what is. You can't take loads of drugs and get away from what is. You can't um, get married and get away from what is or have children. But surprisingly, humans are always trying to escape what's happening. Surprising enough, even though that's the constant, what's happening, the human is always trying to think of ways to have a better what is, all the ways why this what is isn't enough. And this starts really young. Um, it's like the predisposition that happens in the human. So you start off as a baby, free and alive and awake, and all there is is life happening. And, you, and as the baby, you don't know that there is what is, or there isn't what is, or that there is consciousness, or that there is a hand or isn't a hand. There is only what's happening. There's only this awakeness, this alive presence. And then as um, the baby gets older, it begins to be called a name. So Jack or John or Helen or Anne or Sue. And, and it keeps being told it's that name. You are Helen. You're Helen. 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 Hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. And so eventually the baby begins to associate that name with who it is, that its name is Helen. And this is the beginning of identification with form and the forgetting of who you truly are, which is what is. So prior to that, all there was was what was happening, was life happening, this happening, what is. And what is is no thing appearing as everything. And it's conscious of itself, it knows itself. There is awakeness happening here. And um, And then it begins to believe it's a name. And then it begins to look at the body and believe it's the body. I am the body. And I end here. And the chair begins, I end here. And the chair begins here. And the outside world begins out there. So and it's not very conscious. It's not like the one day the body, the baby wakes up and it's like, ah, bing, I am a body. It's like a gradual um, development that happens. So it's gradual. And then, and then the baby begins to associate things that the baby owns. So I have a cup, my cup, my teddy, my friend, my mother, my father, my bed, my seat. I'm sorry, I just have to let Khaleesi in. As I'm getting up, I can show you off one more time my birthday present today. Da -da -da -da. I got given a t-shirt with Khaleesi on it. Do -ba -do -ba -do. And I have a baking tray in the background, which is fairly odd, but there we go. It's the surreal nature of this life. A baking tray with a tea towel. That happens sometimes. A baking tray with a tea towel just appears out of nothing. So, um... So there is a baby, oh yeah, and it begins to claim things. And as it gets older, it begins to claim more, more things like my hair, my hair color, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, my behavior, my way of being, my choices, my free will, my school, my teachers, my books, my backpack, my lessons, my intelligence, my behavior. And everything gets like sucked into this me, which wasn't there at birth. The me wasn't there, it developed. It was, the, in the beginning there was awakeness, there was a presence, there was everything appearing as nothing, or nothing appearing as everything, whichever way around you want to say it. Um, uh, and then it begins to claim all these things and believe that, that that's who it is. 
I am this person. I am the, have all these emotions. I have all these behaviors. I have this intelligence. It's my life. And in my life, it's my responsibility to have happiness over um, unhappiness. And it forms all these ideas and all these belief systems of what happiness is. Happiness is going to school, being educated, having money, um, religion, believing in God, being a good person, being a bad person, whatever it identifies with, um, not being good at school, failing at school, putting fingers up to society, whatever that person believes it is. And it develops a character and it thinks that is who I am. And that person has free will and that person has choice and that person exists as a soul inside the body. It's my soul and it moves this body. It moves this body and I choose. And it has a storyteller that says all this. It has a, a voice in the head that's like, move the hand now, say this now, argue this now. And it's, it's like um, a self-governing entity, this me dynamic. This me dynamic always wants pleasure. So it always wants to be powerful. It always wants to be in control. It wants to be the richest one. It wants to be the most loved. Like it's always seeking for the most pleasure it can be, it can have. So it always wants to be the best at everything. And it gets totally mixed up with, believe it or not, dun, 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 um, survival and the obtaining of money. And the reason that this is, is because um, our thinking and our speaking is all about survival. It's about creating a better survival. We did it. We began to speak. We evolved so we could speak and think and um, create these complex societies, so we could have a better survival rate. It wasn't a conscious thing. It's just the way that everything in this life goes. It tries to survive, survive the best way it can. And it involves in this magical, mysterious way that's um, that like by com competition, by comparing to others, by learning from others, by competing and being better than others. And then it creates this modern day human which has taken millions of years of evolution, which is really amazing and fantastic. And who would have thought this is what we end up with, like speaking into computers like this and talking about non-duality, but there you are. So our language derived out of survival. So the way that we look at ourselves is all about survival. Our me is, is all about survival. I know this is a very unpop um, unpopular subject. Uh, this because it's very offensive to the person. Because the person doesn't want to believe that being a good person is about survival, that being better than your neighbor is about survival, about having the perfect lawn is about survival, that being beautiful is about survival, or, or wanting to be rich is about survival, or having high intelligence is about survival, or being creative is about survival. It wants to think of those as a romantic story of the greatness of you. It doesn't want to see it as a system that's been about, um, uh, competition of the fittest. It wants to see itself as unique and special. So you is very much tied in to seeking to survive and seeking to survive functions by moving towards pleasure and moving away from pain. So that's how our system has, has, um, has navigated growth. Things that are pleasurable means growth. Things that are painful mean destruction. So getting praise means growth. Being lovable means growth. Being successful means growth. Being creative means growth. Having a big house means growth. Having the perfect lawn means success. I have to bring up the lawn because everybody in England is very anal about their lawns. I don't think it's in the rest of the world. So maybe other people are like, why does she keep going on about lawns? It's an English thing. The English like perfect lawns. It's our thing. I think a lot of the northern countries do. They can't in the south. <laughs> it's a bit of sun. It's like, um. So, um, so this is what happens. Your person is all about survival and all about being someone in order to survive. But this is like me stabbing you in the heart. You're like, no, I am special because it pleases God Almighty. And I'm going to get to heaven. Do you not understand that, Lisa Cairns? 
I have special talents about uh, that are beyond survival of the fittest. I am an artist who writes novels that are profoundly intelligent and beyond that dynamic. They go beyond it. So everything that you think about, from my perspective, everything that you do is about survival, including play, including joy. All of that is training you to be a better functioning human within society or trying to, even if it is destructive. Even being a destructive person is about identity in a group that you can fit in of destructive people. It's, a, it's, um, it's all identity. I, I attempt to try and fit into the dog group. When I was younger, um, me and these girls used to fight at this school that I went to and they used to call me a dog and I, um, and I used to call them the cows or my friends, we used to get called the dogs and they used to get called the cows. And then when they saw us, they'd be like, woof, woof, woof. And we'd be bitches, that's what they meant. And then when we saw them, we'd be like, moo, moo, moo. This was the rivalry. And then one day, like in the midst of these like competition and rivalry that we had, um, there was this, the teacher, the head teacher did a story in, in um, assembly that was like five, 600 kids in the assembly. And the story was all about this girl called Lisa who was trying to help this dog that was being abused and the final part of the story was that um, Lisa had all this empathy and these realizations and then when they were hitting the dog she went no stop I am a dog and all my friend all the girls were like <laughs> she's a dog Lisa's a dog and I was like oh well so fitting I am a dog um anyway back to the story um, the point to it was talking about seeking is that everything is about creating an identity for you in order for you to be someone. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a functioning that's happening and what is. But in that, there is such a strong identification with being something that's, that there's another possibility that's forgotten. And this other possibility is freedom, but it has nothing to do with that person. Nothing, nothing to do with that person. That person might change as a result of this realization, more than likely it does, but it's got nothing to do with the person. The person appears in what is. The person always thinks, I get to what is, I get to awakening, I get to know me, but it's actually beyond that. It's, it's, um, it's seeing that it's an energetic shift from being someone and something that's moving in time to seeing and it's not you seeing it, it's like an energetic shift that who you are is actually what's happening. And you were never a small identity that was a singular unit. There was an experience happening of a character inside this dream, but that character was never alive and never experiencing. That character is a functioning that's appearing in every moment and it's being watched. And you could say who you are is the watcher, but it even goes deeper than watcher or goes deeper than consciousness. But it's okay if you want to stop and say what, watching or consciousness, but eventually you begin to see there is no consciousness, there is no watching, there is simply everything. There isn't separation from a watching and the everything. The everything is self-conscious, the everything is knowing itself. And then that's the end of seeking. So a dynamic drops away in the person, which is called this end of seeking. It's not the end of the character. It's not the end of the personality structure. It's the end of the seeking. And the seeking is based on this fundamental belief that you are a person. And when you are a person, you're limited. And that limitation feels uncomfortable. 
and you're always trying to get out of that limitation. And you do it by imagining future events which will free you. So in the future when you're successful, in the future when you do this, and then you imagine freedom in that. It doesn't mean that the character doesn't strive to survive, so the character doesn't carry on being creative or carrying on having a partner or children or creating a life. It's not that the character stops acting like a human. It's that this energy that believes that freedom is found in a particular behavior, in a particular event, in a particular situation in the future. Freedom is right here, ever present. It's who you are. This unconditioned love that you seek in time is what's experiencing right now. And that's nothing to do with the person. The person is being experienced. The person's not experiencing. So even when I'm talking, the person thinks, this is for me. She's talking to me. This is all about me. But it's not about you. Khaleesi has been very sweet lately. She's wanting to be with me a lot. I used to think that that was a sign that she wasn't very well. She's such a, she's not really like a dog. She's more like a dingo. She always likes to be outside in the garden or be where the action's happening. But she's always wanting to be with me at the moment. Aren't you, sweetie? Yeah, you're so sweet. But I don't think it is that she's ill. I think it's that she's getting older. She's seven now. I think she's an old lady.
So what we can do in the next hour is we can talk about non-duality. And I'm also happy to talk about the person on the personal level, but just know that when I talk to you on the personal level, I'm not implying that that person does these things and it will lead them to waking up. I'm also not implying that that person actually has free will or choice to do that. But I'm happy to work on the personal level. It's like if you're emotionally suffering, just like I could give you instructions on how to mend a wound on your leg, I can give you instructions on how to help yourself em emotionally, whether or not you accept those instructions or that they are followed through is down to grace, it's down to life. You would say it's you, it's your choice to do them or not, but it's actually life's choice. And just like I can teach you how to cook an egg, it doesn't mean that there's um, free will and that there's somebody teaching someone else. That's just a mentality that you think. It's information going into that system. Just like with Siri, my phone, it updates itself depending on my preferences and the way that I speak to it and the way that I inter interact with it. It updates and it evolves from my interaction. It's the same with humans. We're constantly evolving to the information that's being put in. And then we say it's us that are evolving. It's me that's evolving. I am evolving. Whereas there isn't a you that's evolving. There is only what's hap happening. And in what's happening, there's a character that seems to be evolving. There's a body that seems to be evolving. But that doesn't equal you. That's not you. Who are you right now? There is presence and there's a person that's like tuk, 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 trying to work it out. And it feels uncomfortable and it wants to arrive somewhere else. So it's like, tuk, 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 tuk. how can I understand what she says to, to um, get somewhere else, to get somewhere better? Tuk, 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 tuk. And the whole time the freedom is that which is experiencing it all. It's that which it's appearing in. But the person is obsessively looking in its own self, in me, 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 me trying to be the perfect person, trying not to think, trying to have perfect emotions, trying to be unconditioned. It's endless. It will always go on endlessly. It's not that. It's something beyond that. But I can help relieve, if there's really uncomfortable emotions, I can help relieve that. There's a lot of wisdom here about emotional emotions and dynamics. <laughs> 